Welcome to the third webinar in our Project Management Fundamentals series. I'm Tracy Abel and I'm the Director and General Manager at Developmental Training Academy and we're looking at the second stage of project scheduling today which is developing the work breakdown structure. So today we're going to be creating a simple work breakdown structure and we're going to base it on the goal that we used in our previous webinar which is building a chicken coop which is at least 1.5 metres in length from a prefabricated kit that costs under $200 by a certain date. We're using this goal because it's a small activity and we can demonstrate the entire process quite quickly. So previously we've looked at the PERT chart which is Program or Project Evaluation Review Technique and the critical path which helps us develop a time frame for our project. We're going to use that information including the task numbers and the time frames and develop our work breakdown structure. Work breakdown structure is also commonly called a WBS. So work breakdown structure is a compilation of activities and requirements in a step-by-step -step structure. So it's a framework for your project. There's a number of different ways to design it and the two that are most common is the hierarchical structure or a tabular structure. On the final page is the hierarchical structure. You can see it's similar to the PERT chart in that it breaks the projects into segments and then breaks down each segment into tasks, subtasks and so on. This can be an excellent visual representation of a project, a great overview for management and for contractors and team members to utilise. However, there's a lot of information missing on there that the tabular work breakdown structure can provide for your team. So a tabular structure lists your predetermined tasks, so from your PERT chart and so on, in order and allows you to allocate the details to those tasks including resources which is people, materials, money and so on and then generate cost estimates for each particular task. There's a sample you can see there. We're going to go through each column and each section in detail. So you'll see that there's six columns there. There's task ID which is the ID number we developed when we did our critical path the predecessor, which is the task directly to before, duration, resources and costs. Let's look at each one of them. So, first of all, task. This is a column in the work breakdown structure and it's a list of every single individual activity that's to be undertaken on your project. And this is required to achieve that project objective. The activities and tasks can be transferred directly to this from the PERT chart or the critical path diagram. The second column is ID or identification number and this reflects a numbering system that we implemented when we did the critical path diagram. Stage 1, task 1, stage 1, task 2 and so on. Predecessor is a task which must be completed directly prior to each task and that means that if one task is not done it cannot allow the next task to be done. So the predecessors are essential and it also helps create a framework for a complex project. Duration is a time frame, that's the length of time that you estimate each task will take. It could be as short as five minutes or a task could take months, particularly if you're waiting on people to get back to you on things. The final two columns are resources, so this is where you list all of the resources required. Not only your materials, but your hire equipment, furniture, facilities, um, and all the people, the experts, the hands-on staff, the contractors, and so on that you need to make your project work. Once you've got all the resources listed, you can work out the costs. So you've got your time frames, you know how much each person, person should approximately cost, and all of the materials, equipment and so on and that then allows you to calculate the costs of your project. So if we're going to create a work breakdown structure for our chicken coop example, the first thing we need is to transfer the information from the PERT and critical path that we looked at earlier. So the information comes through onto our work breakdown structure. We've got three stages, stage one which is the concept and planning, stage two which is execution and stage three which is the final cleanup. So if you have a look at this, the first column has got all of our tasks listed, the second column has got the ID numbers, 
the third column is the predecessor. Now the predecessors weren't clearly identified when we did our pertinent critical chart, but you can work out what they are from looking at it. So go back and analyze those documents and develop it from there. We also had our duration applied on that critical path. The next step is to add your resources and so on. So you'll go through and you'll add your resources. So that would include your project manager, your team, internet, computer and so on. Include a list of every single thing that you think you are going to need for each task and activity because it is amazing how the cost can stack up for tiny little things that become part of activities. From there, you can attribute the cost estimates to each resource. So if you assume the project manager is on $50 an hour, inclusive of super, and that vehicle hires $20 an hour, you can start to work out. So for task 1.1, the project manager is going to cost you $12.50. Task 1.2 is also $12.50 because that's a quarter of an hour. A quarter of $50 is $12.50. So you can go through and work out all of your cost estimates for your project. So very, very early on in a project, you'll have a rough budget. This will be refined later as you do the research in your project planning activities. Now some uh, items in your resources list may not actually have costs attributed to them and that's because your organisation might have those as fixed costs. For example, your office space or your internet, that's paid for on a contract basis regardless of whether you have this project or not so you don't necessarily attribute project costs to it. From there you add up your total identify your preliminary estimate and our total cost for our chicken coop including labour is $418.34. Now if this was a home project the actual cost would be significantly less because you would take out all of the wage costs. So the work breakdown structure, the tabular format has got six columns, the task, the ID numbers, the predecessors and the duration, that's all based on your PERT chart and critical path. Then you would go through each task and add the resources and cost lists. From there you can create yourself a materials list and a draft budget for your project. The work breakdown structure gives the project a structure of its own, allowing for your future development of detailed plans and schedules. This is the basis and this tool can be used throughout the project, updated and redistributed again and again and again. So next week we are looking at early stage stakeholder engagement and how valuable that is to running an effective project. Also just a reminder that our conference is in October from the 26th to the 28th, that's Project Management in Plain English. It also entitles you to complete the Certificate 4 in Project Management Practice for free after the conference. So we cover a lot of theory and information and practical work at the conference. And then we extend that through an online and web-based program so that you can undertake the Certificate 4 in Project Management Practice. And I'd like to thank you and I look forward to seeing you next week.